Okay, so today we're just going to talk about uh, basic equipment you find in gyms, barbell gyms. Actually, this will be more specific to Atlanta Barbell. So some of the stuff we go over might not apply to you because of where you train. Um, the most basic type of strength training equipment is the barbell. Okay, so up here we have three different types of barbells and the top two are your standard 20 kilo or 44 pound, more commonly known as 45 pound bars. Um, these bars are relatively the same. They have, they have a bit of difference. Uh, but one of the things we want to point out is the hash marks on these. This has dual hash marks. This has a single hash mark. Generally, when you have a bar with a single hash mark, that's, that's what's called the power ring or the inner hash mark of a dual mark bar. And it's, it, it's helpful if you can identify that because you use these rings for, for your hands in terms of your grip placement and such. So know that if you're dealing with a bar with a single hash mark, it is generally the inner hash mark of a dual hash mark bar, okay? Now below this we have a 35 or 33 pound bar or a 15 kilo bar to be specific. And this bar is generally used uh, for women or people with smaller hands or that need to start lighter. The diameter is usually about uh, four to five millimeters skinnier than, than your standard bars. So, so it fits in a smaller person's hand well. And it's also lighter, obviously. So it's a lighter starting point. And to further that, as we go down, this is a junior bar. Uh, same kind of deal, a skinnier diameter. And it is lighter, it's 10 kilos or 22 pounds. Now, the way you identify which bar is which is just the length. Generally, the longest straight bar in your gym is going to be a standard bar. They do make heavier bars that are straight, but it's rare that you find one. So you can, you can assume that the longest straight bar you're dealing with is your, is your standard 20 kilo or 45 pound bar. And then the only other one that is usually found in other gyms, though not here, is the 15 kilo bar, the 30 three pound bar, and you can tell that this one's a lot shorter. That's just how you identify them, is the length. Tall ones are standards, smaller ones are usually 15, and really small ones are somewhere in the 20 pound region, okay? So once you've got a good barbell, the next best investment you can make is good footwear. Uh, good footwear for weightlifting is a weightlifting shoe. Weightlifting shoes have two aspects about them that make them incredibly advantageous for weightlifting. The most important being is that they have a very hard sole. That's really stiff. It doesn't deform under load. It does, your feet don't squish around in the shoe and the force transfer from the ground is very direct. Um, the other thing about a weightlifting shoe that helps you out in lifting is that it has a raise in the heel. That's about a half inch, three quarter raise. And what this does it, it, is it just allows your ankle to not undergo so much motion. So it's a little easier to stay balanced. This is your standard run of the, uh, run of the mill Adidas model. Um, they're very worth the buy. They're, you can get them on Amazon. They're not that expensive. Highly worth it. This is, just so everyone knows, an Innovate shoe. Don't ever buy an Innovate shoe. Okay, the next most important piece of equipment you can have is a belt. Um, this is a four inch belt. A four inch belt is advantageous if you can fit in it because it covers a lot of surface area. Now, the correct belt width for you is one that has the belt in between your hip bone and your rib cage. You want to make sure your belt is not overlapping any of those bones. You don't want your belt to encase those bones. It's not good. If you can wear a four inch belt, it's good because it's usually the widest belt they make. But if a four inch belt doesn't fit you, a three inch from Dominion Strength just might. A three inch belt is also generally advantageous if you're doing pulling movements. You sometimes will need a smaller belt for your deadlifts, your snatches, your cleans, than for your squats and your presses. So just like, just like the four inch, you wanna make sure that your belt wraps in between your hip bone and your rib. If you ever see a belt that says Vallejo on it, throw it in the trash. Okay. The next, the next items are just kind of luxury items, all right? Uh, these are wrist straps with an S, and this is your most basic kind of wrist strap. It's found at Played Against Sports and Walmart, and all that it is is a strap, like such, with a loop in it that you choke through, and then when you put it on, you have the slack running in between your index and your thumb, 
Straps are good because they allow you not to have to undergo a lot of grip work. If you've got a hand injury, it allows you to still pull weights. Um, if you're doing a lot of deadlifting, you may want to strap for some of them. Uh, they simply just take the grip out of the movement. Uh, this is, again, your most standard kind of strap. But because of this big knot or the loop here, it rubs up against your skin and it doesn't conform to your hand well. well. A strap that is stitched at the end does a better job of that. It's a little tougher to put on, but with a little practice you get it. And it functions the same way. You just put it on and you need the strap to go in between your index and thumb just like that. And obviously there's a bar in between the strap and my hand. Now, if you want deluxe, real stuff, you want a strap that's not stitched together and made of leather. With the ends not stitched together, they can move freely. And because they can move freely, they can conform to the hand real well and not leave any gaps between the palm and the strap. Okay, so leather non-stitch straps, if you have the patience and perseverance to learn to put them on, are, are, are the best you can have. And the last piece of equipment we have on here is a wrist wrap. Wrist wraps simply support your wrist, kind of the same way belts do. You wrap it around, I've done this wrong, it's fine. Um, and it just hugs on the wrist and keeps it stable during a pressing movement. They're popular for bench presses and presses. They're not necessary by any stretch, but you may find that you, you like to have them. That is uh, the basic equipment found here. It's most of the basic equipment you would need for any of this type of training. And if you have any questions on it or, or things you'd like to recommend, please let us know and we'll, we'll take a look at it. Thank you.